The applause of people who've had this book for seven months there. <laughs> Sometimes you get so excited that I end up feeling like I have to worry for you on a sort of physical medical level. Sometimes you tweet me to say, oh, I've got John Richardson tickets. Why have I not pissed my knickers already? <laughs> Didn't you, Catherine? <laughs> Where's Catherine Glynn? <laughs> She's in here somewhere. <laughs> Shit, where is she? Over there? Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Up the top. There you are, Catherine. Hello there. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> didn't think I'd read it, did you, that? Didn't think I'd read it. <laughs> Probably didn't think I'd remember it for months, did you? Keep it in my head. <laughs> uh, are you all right? Have you had a nice day? Yeah. Are you sure? Because you hurt yourself this morning, didn't you? You got a bit of pot noodle juice in your eye, I read. <laughs> I should probably point out at this point, if you send me a message, I click on your page and I read everything you've ever written. I can't help myself. <laughs> I can't help myself. I get bored. <laughs> you've got pot noodle liquor in your eye. I mean, you're not eating them right, Catherine. That's not... <laughs> Are you all right, then? Yeah. yeah. it was a chilli beef one, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> chilli beef's a favourite. Used to be chicken and mushroom, didn't it? Used to be chicken and mushroom. <laughs> and then she had a chilli beef one. She was like, well, that's it. I'm not going back. I'll trawl back through your page as well. Don't worry about that. I'll look, <laughs> I'll look all through your life. You were chicken and mushroom, weren't you, till the 23rd of June, and then it was all chilli beef <laughs> after that, wasn't it? All chilli beef. Are you with Joe this evening? Yeah. <laughs> That's her boyfriend, Joe. I'll find your loved ones. I'll find your loved ones. <laughs> Joe sent me a little message. Um, are you all right, Joe? How do you feel about uh, your girlfriend sending messages like that to men in their mid-thirties? <laughs> do you know about the hashtag she used? Oh, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> hashtag fanny flutters. You've never heard... <laughs> The likes of it, have you? I've never heard the likes of it. Anyway. The problem is, right, I'm going to stop there so you can relax and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> the problem with this is, then you feel like mates because I look through you and I like you and I wish you all the best for your next anniversary, 23rd of April. Um, <laughs> is that right? No. Is that right? No, 16th? Yeah. 16th. Sorry. <laughs> I get it confused with your birthday, because that's 29th, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I can't help myself. I end up liking you, because I know Joe wants to be a wildlife photographer and he tweets lots of wildlife videos. And I'm rooting for you. I hope it comes true, because it's a worthy dream, that. It's a wonderful job. And I know loads of you are in. I know there's a woman called Annie here who's with her husband and it's their 20th wedding anniversary and this is her fucking gift. And that's not good enough, mate. <laughs> that's not good enough. 20 years is platinum, not tedium. Get her something nice. <laughs> Someone tweeted me about a week ago, said, oh, I'm dead excited to watch John Richardson. I clicked on her page today to see how excited she was on the day. Do you know what she tweeted today? Can't wait to see Dave Gorman in October. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> so then I get to gigs, and it's not like, you're supposed to be a parade of blank faces, but you're not, you're mates. I now start worrying about you, and it can go the other way. You can message me, I end up not liking you. I look at your page, and I think, oh, that dickhead's in tonight. <laughs> so a lot of men will tweet me like, oh, we're coming to watch you tonight, you better not be shit. <laughs> As if I'm usually fit, I think, well, if Phil's in tonight, I better pull something out of the bag. I really had. <laughs> and then sometimes, because you can message me, you just waste my time. You just send me this inane crap. I'll be driving up to a gig in Newcastle. I'll stop for petrol about one o'clock. I'll check my Twitter. In the store, not at the pump. I'm not dangerous. <laughs> Don't want to get told off on that big microphone they have. <laughs> pump seven. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. I check my Twitter, I'll have a message from someone like yourselves coming to the gig that night, and then they'll send me a little message that'll say, All right, mate, looking forward to Gannon till gig later. Uh, what time's it start? <laughs> just that. To me, not to the venue, not to his mate he's going with. He's just sat at his desk, you know, oh, I'm Gannon till that gig later, but I don't even know what time it starts. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do about that? Well, I could Google it since I'm at my computer anyway, but that seems a lot of work for me, that. <laughs> no, I'll just ask him. <laughs> I'm sure he's not better to do on the day of a show than corral his audience in one by one, <laughs> telling us the show times and where we can park nearby and where's good for local Mexican food, that kind of thing. Unless he thinks he doesn't have to reply to me, the working man who pays.
this is bloody mortgage. I've added quite a lot of detail there, to be honest. But... <laughs> I see that and I just think, no, sod off. I know best stuff to do then. I get back in my car, I carry on driving. But then, because I've seen his little picture, I start to feel sorry for him. It's him and his missus up Helvellyn with the little bobble hats on. And I could have told him, couldn't I? As quick as I didn't, I could have just gone eight o'clock. He'd have gone, oh, <laughs> eight o'clock, eh? Like every gig I've ever been to. There's a quinky day. <laughs> He just wants a conversation, doesn't he? I think maybe all the other comics are replying to people. Maybe that's why this relationship exists, because John Bishop would just take the time to say, oh, it starts at eight o'clock, pal. <laughs> John Bishop there. <laughs> Don't say you weren't warned. Um, I think I start to feel bad, and I think, do you know what? He's a grown man. He can look after himself. He can find out how the gig's going. The problem with Twitter is all sorts of different people come to comedy, and some of you I worry about a little bit more. So sometimes I'll be in the hotel afterwards, I check my Twitter, I'll get a message from a teenage girl, right? And you can tell when you get a message from a teenage girl, because their Twitter name's never just their name. It's never like at Sarah Turner or something like that. It's got all colours and sparkles on it. <laughs> but like at Izzy Wizzy and then a galloping unicorn and a. <laughs> beating love heart and a cupcake with a candle in it and the whole thing says, why would I just tell you my name? There's so much more about me. I love unicorns and cupcakes and candles and love. <laughs> the minute I say that, I think, oh, don't come and see me. <laughs> You've got that much love and hope in your heart. I'm not your guy. <laughs> Go and see one of the other comedians. You'll have a lovely time. Don't come and sit through two hours. I was going to get a pot noodle. I decided to fucking smash me head against the wall. <laughs> That's not what it's for. I don't want to ruin your dreams. But, you know, they do enjoy the gig. You get a message afterwards, all in capital letters, like, oh, amazing gig, cheers for coming to Scarborough, Ruffle Mow, gif of a goblin eating a Toblerone for no reason whatsoever. It's moving pictures, it's better, isn't it? And I say, oh, just waiting for me dad to come and pick us up, lol. Right? And I read that in the hotel. I think, I wonder if their dad came and picked him up. <laughs> Cos then I don't hear from him again, right? And that goes for all of you. Not one of you pricks tweets me when you get home. <laughs> As if I'm not worried sick about each and every one of you. You disappear with these cryptic tweets like, oh, cheers for the gig, just gonna have a few beers, walk back along the canal. I think he's dead. <laughs> I lost another one. I need to be careful with my audience. I've got to hold on to him. It's like that opening scene in Casualty when they go, I'm just gonna mend them fuses in that puddle in the basement. <laughs> I start checking your page to see you tweet again and you're not tweeting. I think, what's happened? What's happened? I think, what if these girls' dad forgot to pick them up? You know, what if their mum dropped them off and he picked them up and he's just forgotten? He's barrelled in. She's gone, what are you doing here? He's gone, well, I'm just in from work. She said you're supposed to be picking Easy Wizzy Unicorn Cupcake Love Heart. <laughs> up from that gig. And he says, what gig? She says, that little gay looking cunt. How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> he says. He says, well, I know exactly who you mean now, love. Yeah, I couldn't place him from the name, but that's such a vivid description of his work. <laughs> he thinks, oh, bugger, I've been to the pub after work, and I can't tell her that, because I told her I was working late, and I've been spinning that one for years. So, oh, I'll probably be all right. He goes, oh, go and get an owl, love. So he sets off drink driving. He's dead now, and he? he's in a ditch somewhere, <laughs> smashed into a tree. He wouldn't have texted her, would he? So I'm about to hit a tree, love. You want to get a taxi? So she's still outside the venue, isn't she? Freezing. Scarborough, seafront theatre, middle of December. Oh, he'll be here in a minute. Oh, he'll be here in a minute. Then I think, what if a transit van turns up and starts driving around? So, oh, sometimes he comes in the works van. Sometimes he's back in the works van. They get in the back of this van. Then they wake up two weeks later in the middle of Eastern Europe, surrounded by, as we know, the least funny rapist anywhere on the planet. LAUGHTER